Just to put Think Big on the map and the evolution, we came out of the incubator accelerator in the co-working space. But when we were evolving as an organization for Think Big Partners, what we didn't really realize was we were actually creating a hybrid organization. And that hybrid organization was really creating an innovation partnering model. Who are innovation partners? Well, those partners are entrepreneurs, large companies, and if those two get together and they do things right, they create jobs, companies, and that creates a community. And it really becomes a uh, civic innovation system. And so really what I'd like to talk about just for the next few minutes is a little bit about the evolution from an entrepreneurial ecosystem to a civic innovation ecosystem and our role, especially in the smart city space. So we've talked about smart cities in the past. What is a smart city project? Well, real quickly, Kansas City started out in 2014, Think Big Partners, Cisco, and the innovation team from the city of Kansas City, Missouri. We envisioned the opportunity to be able to improve infrastructure, modernize things, uh, lower cost, uh, create better efficiencies, really saving money. That's what smart city technology is. It's not just about connected infrastructure, uh, beacons and sensors and assets and data flowing. You've got to be able to have an ROI. But the other part of the project, which was interesting, was the creation of an economic development initiative. If done right, smart cities uh, can help foster entrepreneurial ecosystems, which really creates a civic innovation opportunity, which is what we're seeing here in Kansas City today. So civic innovators, who are they? They're all around us. Everyone in this room, we all live with problems. If you woke up this morning, you saw something driving down the street, maybe it was a pothole. Maybe you thought, gosh, I wish we could fill that pothole. You turn on your water, you're turning on electricity. At one point in time, those are called innovations. Today, we think that they're just things that should happen in a city. The city services that flow every day have got to perform flawlessly, and the citizens enjoy those services. But the one thing that we know with modern urbanization challenges is that we've got three million people a week moving into cities, You've got urban infrastructure that is getting stressed and taxed at rates than ever before, and you've got challenges with this densification of cities. People want more people, but when they show up, oh my gosh, there are more people. How do we provide you know, the things that citizens need? Is there an innovation opportunity here? I think the answer is yes. If you look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs, food, water, shelter, those are the most basic premises that cities have got to be able to enable to make citizen experiences very good and powerful. Um, food. Food is a big opportunity, water is a big opportunity when you don't have it. And we're gonna talk about that here at the very end, how that turns into a business opportunity under the smart city model. But safety and security are also really important too. All of the urban challenges that we talk about, you get a lot of people in a room, safety, security, food, water, shelter, transportation, mobility, those all have to happen for a city to be vibrant. And the opportunity for a smart city and create an entrepreneurial ecosystem and assist an innovator model is very real. Why is it important? Well, governments, first of all, they need a better um, opportunity to be able to create technology faster. There's not enough money, there certainly is enough time. And the ability to move quickly, get a better view of problems, be able to create a much broader uh, set of skills and experiences that can create crowdsourced innovation, that's the first opportunity that government has. The government really is an ultimate platform. You know, water pipes, electricity, uh, food, water, shelter, those are all things that we've got to be able to support. But if done correctly, large companies and entrepreneurs can also play a role within this ecosystem. Large companies are looking for opportunities to be able to get a better understanding of the problems that cities face. But their challenge is sometimes that they can't move fast enough. They can't have the agility that a small emerging technology company can enjoy. These entrepreneurs, meanwhile, are looking for problems to solve and opportunities to be able to um, you know, create partnerships. So the large company, small company entrepreneur opportunity when paired together in the citizen innovator model can really unlock a lot of value for both parties and really solve a lot of problems for the cities. So what I'd like to talk about is really the role of the citizen innovator specifically within the entrepreneurial ecosystem. And there are four real roles that we can understand. The first one is as a citizen. Everyone in this room is an explorer. When you woke up this morning, you drove down that road, you saw that pothole, maybe you saw a water main break, you saw a light out. You're discovering things in your daily life that need to be fixed. You may have an aha moment that says, gosh, there's gotta be a better way. But the explorer role that citizens can play at the beginning point of an ecosystem is the opportunity to be able to take things that you know that we tolerate or live with and say, there's got to be a better way and how do we now get it into a cycle to do something about it? That's the first role that a citizen innovation uh, model can create. The next role is a citizen ideator. Now that we've got a problem identified, 
how do we create a solution? What's the better mousetrap? Is there a better way to, to detect that water main break? If that light's gonna go out, is there a better light that we can reinstall to be able to lower the cost? That's called LED light. That LED light was the evolution of years and years and years of lighting. It's 140 years old, and it's really in the last 10 years that we've been able to create new cost savings from technology. So the ability to take the explorer to identify the problem, the ideator, to be able to create the solution, and then the designer. The designer really now starts building and testing and applies the um, design principles against the problem statement and creates the actual framework of the solution itself. They work with the ideator to be able to take the uh, translation of, of uh, the concept. Here is how we think we should do it to actually how do you get it done? The citizens in every city can have an opportunity to be able to play a role as a designer, ideator, explorer, or lastly, the diffuser. The diffuser is the opportunity to be able to take it, and whether you're a city or a large company, you can implement these technologies, you can have prototypes built, you can validate it at large scale, you can get the design insight to see if the right thing was built. But if you take those four roles within the civic innovation uh, model and create an entrepreneurial ecosystem out of it, you can benefit. The economic benefit of Internet of Things technology on the smart city realm is worth somewhere between $3.9 and $11.1 trillion. That's an economic value that can be unlocked if you create better solutions to problems that we all live with today. And if you unlock those solutions, you create companies to be able to solve these problems, you can create economic development initiatives, and you start creating an entrepreneurial ecosystem based on citizen innovators and civic innovation. Again, governments are not equipped to be able to handle the massive problems that are emerging from infrastructure and the complexity of public safety. But all of us as citizens together, which is what we're going to talk about here at the panel in just a moment, if we pair all of our resources together, we can not only create the solutions, but we can create an ecosystem of the companies. Uh, interesting fact, the high growth companies are offering, uh, often powering these solutions. They tend to grow at a rate of 20% more per year. And while they only represent 4% of the entire economy in the United States, they create 40% of all the jobs. And if you look at the angel investors in a community, 90% of all the angel investors actually come from companies that were the high growth companies. So if you talk about a virtuous cycle of capital creation, knowledge clustering, solution uh, development off of problems, the opportunity that cities face, especially in the smart city realm, is really uh, an exciting one to be able to say, how do we create uh, solutions to problems better, hopefully faster for sure, hopefully cheaper too. How do you activate all this within this innovation ecosystem? Well, first you have to get uh, the community to be able to understand that there's an opportunity. You have to invite them in. We have to educate them. We have to inform them of the problems and create models that they can understand to say, okay, I have an opportunity to act as an explorer to submit my problem or an ideator to be able to uh, submit my solution. How do we get the designers though, to get activated? You have to now have an engagement strategy. It could be hackathons, it could be design contests, it could be public forums like this great event here today. Um, it could be the opportunity to be able to get cities to work together, to be able to sponsor white papers or to get insights to things. But lastly, we've got to actually innovate it. We've got to be able to create a laboratory condition based on the data, the learnings, harnessing education, the universities, governmental research, tech transfer programs, and other cities to work together to be able to take these ideas and be able to transform them into an application that can be tested, developed, and shorten the cycle time of innovation and be able to develop it into the market. It's the co-designing with the government partner that the citizens can have to be able to create these solutions. It's an exciting opportunity that we think in smart cities, because the ROI for smart cities, be able to save 60% on electricity costs on LEDs alone. If that's not exciting, but you get a networked light, you can now drive that down to as much as 80 to 90% cost reduction. These are uh, economics that makes sense to every city government. They can now reapply into digital inclusion, social programs, policing, you can get technology infrastructure investment in other areas that are really lacking. In Kansas City, we still are replacing a few water aqueducts in river market area. But the opportunity to be able to make these technological advancements is so much more sped up through the civic innovation partnering. Um, for the companies, the companies be able to have the opportunity to solve a problem, maybe work in a large company. We're talking about companies um, creating that first customer. The government can be a great first customer, but the next best customer ought to be the rest of the um, cities or other people that are suffering from water leaks and then on the knowledge clusters. But if you were to really look at some of the Maslow hierarchy of needs to understand the economic value before I wrap this up, water, we talked about water, somewhere between 20 and 60% of all the water in any city, people don't know where it goes. Yet we've got flooding in some areas, we've got drought in other areas, and yet we've got water that we can't find. That's a problem, there's an opportunity there economically, it's also a social impact uh, piece and it's an imperative if we're gonna be on this planet. 
Um, food, by 2050, we have to um, increase our food production by 60%, just because of the densification of people in urban areas. 87% of North America lives in a city, but the rest of the, United, uh, rest of the world's 53%, but it's gonna grow more, but we've gotta get more food to the right places. We've got more food, which by the way, requires more water. Um, you know, public safety, there's 1,400 domestic terrorism or international terrorism incidents in the world in 2016. We've gotta be able to thwart terrorism. We've got to be able to get a better handle on uh, events when they do occur. But these are all opportunities to be able to um, have an economic impact and create a social impact, but also have a financial impact to the companies that solve them. And then lastly, what I'm most excited about in working with people like Bob Bennett, Kate Garman, the city, and then other great partners, uh, the opportunity to be able to create a civic innovation lab, uh, the opportunity to be able to create uh, insights to problems, be able to use something like the Kansas City Living Lab, be able to use a data portal where citizens can get access, they can do a regression analysis, test out new applications, model things, and then actually hopefully have an infrastructure asset to deploy the actual hardware uh, on a real life scale thing to see if it works. The ability to use a living lab, programs, citizen innovators, government partnering, innovation partnering, it's really an opportunity for us to make a real impact on humanity. So with that, um, I know that we've got a panel. I'd like to invite the panel to come up. Uh, for this discussion on civic innovation in the entrepreneurial ecosystem, but hopefully the opportunity to be able to make an impact through the unlocking of human capital through entrepreneurs, innovators, universities, government officials, to be able to make a difference here. We're all citizens. We all have the opportunity to do civic innovation. So with that, thank you very much, and we're going to join the panel.